Hi. Today we are looking at Chapter 4, Section 5, so 4.5, and this is entitled Using Congruent Triangles. So this is where we take SSS, SAS, AAS, and um, S, um, ASA, and put them together and use them in some proofs, particularly. Now, um, I want to go through a proof with you. And so I've started it up here on the board. I've, driven, I've, I've, I've put up the drawing, and what you can see is this. And it looks a little bit confusing, but let's take a look at it. You are asked to prove this triangle over here congruent to this triangle over here. Now, right now, what we're given is over here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So let's mark those, this one and this one. And you are given angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. This one is congruent to this one. And that's all we have so far. <clears throat> we have one angle of, of the triangles that we're trying to prove congruent. We're going to need more, and we're going to need either um, an angle on a side or a couple of sides. But we have to get that by doing something a little bit unusual. What we're going to do in this case is prove these large triangles, this one here and this one over here. We're going to prove those two triangles congruent. And when we do, we are then going to be able to take a piece of each of those triangles that is also a piece of the two triangles we're trying to prove congruent. So if we can do that, if out of the big triangles we can get EF is congruent to AF, and we can get these vertical angles congruent, then we're going to have angle, side, angle, to angle, side, angle, and we can prove the two smaller triangles congruent. So let's see how that would work. I've written the given information over here, and if you'll take a look at this big triangle here, and this big triangle here, we have an angle and an angle, and we have CF congruent to itself. So step number two is going to be CF is congruent to CF. And the reason for that, of course, is the reflexive property. Reflexive. Now, number three, we now have enough information to state that the big triangles are congruent. So let's do, let's do AFC, triangle AFC is congruent to triangle EFC. And remember, those statements have to match up. So angle A has to match up with E, which it does. Uh, angle F has to match up with angle F, which it does, and C with C. And the sides also match AF with EF, etc. All right, now we've proven this big triangle congruent to this big triangle. Let's pluck the sides out that we need. That's this one we need congruent to this one. And notice that those are parts of the big triangles, but they're also parts of the smaller triangles. So what I'm going to say is EF is congruent to AF. EF congruent to AF. And the reason for that is, oh, here, did we put a reason for this? This reason was, you may recall, angle, angle, side. So let's put that in here, angle, angle, side. Now, EF is congruent to AF because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You may recall that from class, CPCTC. We have two triangles that are congruent. Their corresponding parts then must be congruent. And this one corresponds to this one. So we are allowed to say EF is congruent to AF because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now, we have an angle and we have a side. We can get 5 congruent to 6 by starting out first we say angle 5 and angle 6 are vertical angles. And that's the definition of vertical angles. All right. Next step we're going to say step 6 is angle 5 is congruent to angle 6 and the reason is vertical angles theorem. Now I can mark this one congruent to this one. 
And now we have angle, side, angle, two angle, side, angle, and we can complete our proof with step number seven saying triangle AFB is congruent to triangle EFD, which is what we wanted, EFD, and the reason is angle, side, angle. All right, that completes that proof. Now, that's one type of proof, where you have to prove two triangles congruent and get the parts out of them in order to prove two other triangles congruent. Uh, there is another, well, there are many types, but one other one that I wanted to take a look at was one in which um, you have parallel lines and you need to use them. So let me redraw, let's get rid of this, and we'll keep the proof, uh, we'll keep the, uh, we'll keep the two columns here. And the new drawing is going to look like this. It's, it's this coming this way, and then we have this coming down this way, and um, this comes across to about here. All right, and then let's see. Then this comes across here. Let's do that. And the last piece of this then is this comes down. I'm going to move this a little bit further out, and then this comes down here like this. All right. We're going to prove, let me mark them up here, we're going to prove these two triangles. So we have A, B, C here, A, B, C, and then we have D and E. All right, the given that we don't have any, any angles numbered, but I think, uh, well, that's all right, we'll leave it. Okay, given information, B is the midpoint of A, D. So let's put that over here. B is midpoint of A, D. And that's going to allow us to say that this is congruent to this. All right. We are also given, that's not all, we are also given angle C is congruent to angle E, congruent to angle E. This is all given. And so let me mark C congruent to E. And the third part is BC is parallel to DE. BC parallel to DE, and that's all given now. That means this is parallel to this, and that's going to be an important piece of information as well. Um, <clears throat> all right, if we're trying to prove this triangle congruent to this one, we already have an angle, and so far that's all we have. Let's take the next, this piece of information here. B is the midpoint of AD, so we can say AB is congruent to BD, and that would be definition of midpoint. Okay, now we have this congruent to this, so we're making some progress. We have an angle and a side. Now, we need to decide what we can use here. The only piece of information we haven't used yet is that BC is parallel to DE. If that's the case, then perhaps there are some angles that we could use. Um, and if you think back to your parallel lines and transversals, corresponding angles, this one and this one, are congruent. And you can see that better if I take this away temporarily. Now do you see this parallel line to this parallel line, and those are corresponding angles. So I'm going to put this line back, and I'm going to say angle ABC is congruent to angle BDE. And the reason for that is corresponding angles. All right, two parallel lines, corresponding angles are congruent. And that is a postulate, which we sometimes call CAP, corresponding angles postulate. All right, now let's see where we are. Now it looks like we have an angle, an angle, and a side, two angle, angle, side. So, I think that should be enough to prove the two triangles congruent. And the order we were to do them in was, was um, actually, excuse me, the proof is actually to prove angle BAC is congruent to, that would be this angle, BAC to DBE. So we're trying to prove these two angles congruent. We have to start with the triangles. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say triangle CAB is congruent to triangle EBD. And the reason for that, we said, was angle, angle, side. Now that we have the two triangles congruent, it's easy to prove the two corresponding angles are congruent because, of course, corresponding angles of congruent triangles are congruent, which is, so let's see, I can now say angle uh, BAC is congruent to angle DBE, and that would be corresponding parts I think I said it wrong a minute ago. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. And that concludes this proof. And we'll leave it at that for the moment and maybe come back and do um, another time a couple of other example proofs so that you have some that you can refer back to when you're looking at some of these proofs. Thank you very much. Have a good day.